Okay, made it into the lab. Here we are in a global pandemic. So I had to wear my mask to get into the building. We've converted the lab, at least part of it, to a little video studio. I can't teach in class, so I want to be able to um, teach online. So here we go. Uh, welcome to Biomechanics of Movement, the science of sports, robotics, and rehabilitation. For those of you who don't know me, who is probably most of you, my name is Scott Delp. I'm a professor at Stanford in bioengineering, mechanical engineering, and orthopedic surgery. And I'm here to share with you what I know about human movement and how to use this knowledge of biomechanics to enhance the lives of others. Biomechanics has been a positive force throughout my life. When I was a child, I dreamed of competing in the Olympic long jump or even downhill skiing. And I had the intuition that examining films of world-class athletes in the Olympics would help me get the edge I needed. Well, I never made it to the Olympics, not even close, but I did become a high-level nerd and video analyst. I've spent the last 30 years learning as much as I could about biomechanics. I've experienced the joy of teaching and learning from fantastic students in the engineering school and the medical school at Northwestern University and Stanford University. What I'll cover in this series of lectures is derived from this teaching experience. There's a book uh, by the same title and other teaching materials that uh, complement what I'll cover in lecture. The book is uh, named here. It's published by MIT Press. It is co-authored by my friend and co-author, Professor Thomas Yoshida, and the book is illustrated by my friend and brother, David Delp. So let's start by focusing on why we study biomechanics of movement. So why do we study movement? We study because it is absolutely fascinating and fundamental to life. Our bodies are amazingly versatile, exhibiting both strength and dexterity, and movement is vital vital for maintaining physical and psychological health. Regular physical activity helps prevent heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes, depression, anxiety, and other serious illnesses. Yet only about half of the world's population is sufficiently active to maintain their physical and mental health. It's also important to know that physical activity is very potent and inexpensive medicine that can have profound health benefits, even in small doses. In studying biomechanics of movement, we seek to understand the biological structures and processes involved in producing movement and to apply this knowledge to improve mobility. So why do we study movement? Because it's amazing. Check out dancer Victor Luez as the creature in the ballet Frankenstein. When I saw this up in San Francisco, the strength, agility, and grace of ballet struck me as one of the most beautiful and amazing feats that humans achieve. And imagine what's happening in the orchestra as Victor performs. The level of neural control that each instrument, each instrumentalist in the orchestra needs to simply produce that beautiful sound is absolutely extraordinary. Understanding how the nervous system is conducting this symphony of muscles to produce the dance and the music is one of the great mysteries of life. So we study movement because it's amazing. We also study movement to optimize human performance and to prevent injury. This is an example of a study in the human performance lab that we use to analyze how muscles contribute to support and propulsion in running. We can go beyond the experimental approaches to look much deeper into movement, and we'll use the Human Performance Lab throughout this course to give a demonstration of the experimental techniques that we use. So why do we study movement? We might want to also manage musculoskeletal and neuromuscular disorders. For example, this child has cerebral palsy, is walking in a crouch gait, and we use biomechanics to understand the causes of 
his movement abnormalities and try to design an optimal treatment that could give him a more erect posture and efficient gait. So why study movement? To manage musculoskeletal problems like osteoarthritis. What I'm showing here is an x-ray of a knee. Typically, in a healthy knee, the x-ray will show nice, clear, transparent layer between the bones that you can see. You can see the, the femur bone on the top, the tibia bone on the bottom. But what's missing, you see there's bone-on-bone -bone contact here. That's caused from excessive loads over a long duration. If we want to understand how osteoarthritis begins, to develop interventions that prevent this painful disease, or to design implants that go in and replace the joint, we need to know what the forces are in the joints. And that's what biomechanics of movements helps us do. So why study movement? To do creative work. This is Jen Stafford. She's the performer. And we're using motion capture technology that we'll cover in class to animate Jen's avatar that you can see here. Algorithms and biomechanics are the mainstay of computer animations and have been recognized with several Academy Awards. You'll understand those techniques by the end of the class. We also study biomechanics to design robotics and prosthetic limbs. These are incredibly complex designs frequently to mimic what's happening in, in real biomechanical systems. And finally, we study movement biomechanics to improve health. These are just a few of the reasons why millions of people are interested in understanding human movement. So what's up next? We've talked a little bit about why we study movement. What I want to move on to now is how we produce movement and exactly what we'll cover in the course. Finally, in this first set of lectures that covers really chapter one of the book, I'll uh, conclude by telling you what, how, what you can do to get the most out of the course. See you next time.